um, my question is like, how do you handle or how would you approach long-term injury surgeries? Like, how would you go about that? You know, it's, I mean, I'm the perfect guy to ask, right? Cause I've had those three, uh, long term injuries. Probably. I probably had even more long-term than you had as far as like months, like they took longer slaw. Yeah, you, um, had, you had two, two ACLs, two ACLs and then, yeah, and then the factors. ankle microfracture, brokey nation, central station, all that. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. And you know, it's interesting too, Scotty, my father-in-law just had knee replacement surgery. So what oh, did my mother-in-law? Awesome. Well, no, that sucks, but they start to feel better. Anyways, um, it's, it's also something that I noticed being around him just, and this is, he's, he's a tough cookie, but the mindset of like NFL players, I'm not saying we're the greatest, definitely not, but in just the normal everyday person after a surgery and I think the biggest thing that I, man, I hated being injured. I hated the idea of surgery leading up to surgery. Um, Myself, what I would do is I'd have to get, I was in, I'd get injured and I'd be so mad. I'd be angry. I'd be like, this is not the time because all three times were not ideal and as far as me moving up in the league or me one year was free agency, like just not a, not a lot of ideal situations. And this may be kind of weird, but the way I took, took the long-term as, I mean, I took it as a challenge, but I really, 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 really leaned on my faith during that time. And I know some people are like, yeah, how do you lean on your faith? You're going to get your leg bent back and forth. You're going to go do one-legged squats, whatever it may be, or what you're leaning on your faith as you ice in the game ready. Um, But really I think it was a shift in attitude and what can I do during this time? That's maybe positive. And I remember, I can't remember what year it was, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to use this time. I have multiple things that I can talk about with this, but I'm going to use this time um, to just affect other people around me. Cause there's a lot of people that are injured. I'm going to do my best and I'm going to try to crush this rehab and I'm going to go day in and day out. I'm going to have small goals. I want to get better at this. I want to get better at that. I want to get better at that, but I want to do affect the people around me in a positive way. Because the thing that people don't know, especially in the NFL, you have these long-term injuries and people are like almost borderline depressed. Cause they're like, maybe it's a contract year. Maybe there's someone that they're older and it's like, well, I'm not going to get a play next year. No one's going to want me. Or maybe you're young and you don't have enough film out there. And it's like, yeah, I'm going on IR, but then I'm going to have to be fighting for my position next year. So it's a really kind of, I don't want to say a dark place, but it can be, and it can be very, very lonely. So my goal was, is uh, for the people that know faith's a big part of my life. And I wanted to conduct myself in a way that I'm spreading some sort of light. Right. And that's in, in my faith, that's the light of uh, Jesus living in me. And so I took it as a challenge to every day, go in there and affect different people. Maybe it's the trainers, maybe it's to make them feel, feel self-worth. Um, or that they're appreciated. Um, it's the other guys that I'm, um, doing rehab with maybe not the same rehab, but you're talking cause you're all in this small area. So it was my goal. I was like, I'm going to bring some sort of, some sort of joy. So I'd come in feeling like absolute trash and people are like, Hey, how we doing, Danny? How we doing today? I'd clearly be feeling terrible but I'd look right look at them right in the eyes. And even if I didn't believe it, I'd say, this is the best day I've ever had. And it's like, dude, you're like a week out of surgery. Like what? You don't feel the best. And, I get, and they'd go, they go, really? I go, yes. I go, are you kidding me? I go, next year is going to be the best year I've ever had in my career. And I just went in with that mindset because 
I don't think we know the effect that we have on others. Not because I was Danny Woodhead, but just like going um, in a meeting. And if you have someone that's just down and out, that affects you and you don't even know it. So what my goal was is I was like, I'm just going to have fun. Even when I'm not feeling like having fun, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to make small things funny. Man, I got to the point where I was almost borderline addicted to Red Bull sugar-free in San Diego. I made it a clown thing. I was like, hey, like, I just talked about that. I'd be like, man, I can't go without it. And people, like, it's funny, but people would be like, I don't know why, but this is funny. Like, he's injured. He's out. He's 31. He's going to be a free agent. He doesn't really have anything to look forward to in football, but for some reason, this cat's happy. I remember a buddy of our, or a buddy of mine, Stevie Johnson, receiver. And this is, I think, when um, I feel like the Lord was very kind with me in it because there are a lot of days I didn't want to be happy. There were a lot of days that I didn't want to go into it like positive, right? And I'm just joking around with Stevie. Stevie had an injury. I can't remember who's a knee also. Um, but he comes up to me and I'm just riding the bike, joking around, feeling like trash probably at the time. And he goes, he looks at me, he goes, what are you? He goes, how are you always so happy? I go, dude, I'm not. I go, I'm really not. I go, but I do know one thing. I said, my creator has things figured out, like the plans for my life, the plans for my free agency, the plans for everything that's going on in my football career. Like, I know that. And I, and I, and I have, I have comfort in that. And I have like, like that, that allows me to have joy, allows me to affect people. And I felt like it was my responsibility to make sure other people didn't let that overtake them how I felt because I felt like crap. I didn't want everyone else to feel like crap if uh, on me, because if you have anyone that's done long-term rehab knows that if you're depressed or if you're down and out or whatever it may be, that affects healing. That affects, um, that affects your rehab. So I was all, I was doing it for myself obviously, because you have to have a good attitude. And if you have a good attitude, your um, recovery is going to just go through the roof. Because Mm -hmm. if you have a great attitude, your recovery is so much faster. If you have a crap attitude and you're like depressed, your body, because what, what happens with depression, anxiety, stress, what happens with anxiety, stress, you can't get like the recovery process doesn't happen. Yeah. So like my whole, you change with pure negativity. Yes. So like physiologically, you also change with pure positivity. You do. And so it was my goal, obviously to be positive for myself, but I was like, no, there's a bunch of people in here that I know are almost depressed. So like, I want to make it to where it's fun. I wanted to make it where the trainers enjoyed it, man. I, and I, to this day, I think they enjoyed when I was on IR not something you want to really brag about because that means you're on injured reserve, but I was going there to make their day better. I was going in there to, because that's my responsibility. At at the end of the day, those trainers, they don't care how, like now that I'm retired, they don't care how good of a football player Danny Woodhead was. I mean, sure. They, I'm sure they wanted me to succeed because they liked me and got along with me, but I think they're going to remember my attitude in the training room. If I was selfish, if I was, um, some arrogant dude, or they're going to remember like, man, he worked really hard and man, we had a lot of fun. And when he was in there for those four hours, like we enjoyed it. He jokingly would talk crap to me, even though I was a trainer, like I would talk, tra- I would, I would talk crap to the guys that would be helping me with rehab just to make things fun. And, and I think, so that's kind of a really, 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 really long answer, but it's just like, have small goals, but just be positive. If you're positive in the whole 
situation of your rehab, there's going to be days that, man, you don't want to wake up and go to rehab. I don't know how many days I was like, this sucks, but I had to flip a switch because I had to do it for myself, but I also had to do it for the people that I was around because that's at the end of the day, I'm not saying I'm going to be held responsible for it, but God allowed me to be in that situation. And he trusted me with that situation around those people. So like maybe do your job and that's just to try to, to be a light and, and try to make people smile. And, and, and if their rehab sucking, like me making them smile, maybe might've been the only good part of their day because maybe they don't, they're not married. Maybe they go home and they're just sitting in a freaking dark apartment. Maybe that's what they're doing. So like maybe the time that I'm jabbing them and making fun of people and making fun of the trainers, making fun of myself, like that right there, I think we as people, like, let's just kind of take advantage of every situation we have, life experience. It could be going to the grocery store. And if you're a butt to someone, that's going to that's, that's gonna ruin their day. And, and that's something I'm even trying to do with myself. Like if I see someone somewhere, oh, hi, how are you doing? People don't think that's a big deal and they don't want to open their mouth, but that's huge. Or it's like, I even try to like, even though I'm not maybe in their way, I'm like, oh, excuse me, sorry. Just because you acknowledge people and communication with people, so, we don't know how crappy of a day someone else is having. So that's kind of my whole, whole spiel on injuries and long-term injuries is I just want to, I just want to in some way, and this is not even injuries. This is just life. Now. I just want to be some sort of a light for someone because I have no idea what someone else is going through. Thoughts you, guys. Sorry. Yeah. I just, I went long. No, 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 no. It's perfect. Perfect. Uh, you know, I'll kind of give my uh, a little more abbreviated deal because you you pretty yeah, much apologies on that. No, no, you you covered you know, kind of the rehab uh, issues there. Uh, yeah. When you get hurt, when you get hurt, hurt bad, you do go through a lot of dark dark times. Um, I didn't I didn't necessarily deal with like depression issues, but I did get get angry a lot. And, uh, you know, I won't go into the actual process of the re rehab. Cause like I said, you covered it, but, um, my, my kind of philosophy, uh, was, uh, you know, it was hard for me to, 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 to get positive. Cause I was just angry, but in, in my own way, I did get positive and I made it for, for me, it was a competition. So if the trainer says, do, do this shoulder exercise, this many sets, this many reps, I would do a few more reps and one more set. Just, just do a little bit more than what they said. Um, because if your trainer's good, he's already going to be pushing you. Uh, if your trainer's bad, he'll just follow the protocol and say, oh, you do this. I don't care how you do it. Just freaking go and do it. And then guess what? you're not going to be good when you come back. But I figured out that if I just do a little bit more than what they said, then I would get stronger faster. Now there is a fine line to that. If you, uh, if you do too much, then you risk hurting yourself again. Uh, so I was always mindful of that. But if they said, you know, four sets of 10 of Cardinal planes, I would do five sets of 12. Uh, and that was it. And, and that really helped me because it was almost like I was competing against the timeline. I was competing against the trainer, competing against the doctor. Um, and that bred positivity. But I do want to talk about uh, a point that, that you made that I think is very important. People understand <clears throat> everything you put in your body is fuel and, and it fuel fuels you correctly or it fuels you incorrectly. Um, Obviously, in retirement, I'm not always fueling the way I'm supposed to. But uh, when I was playing, uh, it's it's not just what you eat and drink; it's what you do mentally too, what you put in your brain. And negativity is poison, and positivity is fuel. 
uh, your body is going to react accordingly. So when you tell yourself positive things, um, your, your body does change just like it does with negative things. And that's why I have, I've had conversations with my wife. Um, and, you know, as a parent, you have a lot of goals, uh, how, how you want to parent, how you want to do things, the atmosphere you want for your kids. But one of, one of the staples that we've talked about is making a big effort to be positive because kids thrive in that. Um, but a lot of kids out there live in negativity too, and that affects them. So what I want our 17 listeners to understand is that it is really, really important. The self-talk, the self-talk you got, uh, and it could be something small. You know, you said when, when you would come into rehab and you would, uh, you know, even if you weren't feeling it, you would say it's the greatest day ever. That shit is real. That is a mm-hmm. real thing. They, they say in the league, fake it till you make it. Uh, and I know we have, we've talked about this before yeah. in terms of my playing, yep. how, how I was so scared a lot of weeks that I would have the most unreal Muhammad Ali self-talk going on that people actually thought I was crazy. Uh, you were because I'd be going up against an Aaron Donald type. Just be like, this guy sucks. He hasn't seen a guy even close, close to me. This guy I mean, he better be careful because his life might end this week. And obviously I didn't believe that because I was terrified out of my mind. Yeah. But if I kept telling myself that throughout the week, I'd get stronger and more confident that I could go out there and give myself the best chance of success every single weekend. Because if I went the other way with that, there would be no confidence and I would have zero shot. Yeah. That's what I was just going to say is you don't have confidence. Well, the people, people always say, they'll talk to me and they're like, <clears throat> like, obviously you have to be confident and talk about like people, players being confident in the NFL. It's like, well, yeah. Cause how many successful players in the NFL aren't confident? Z- zero. I mean, no one's successful if you're not confident. And sometimes you have to do, do that. Hey, Scotty, you have any questions or thoughts? Um, no, I just wanted to wrap it up with two really good points. Um, one of my favorite saying is everybody has a battle we know nothing about. So yeah. be kind because yeah. you don't know if their mom has cancer. You just don't know. Um, and it could all circle back to what your parents probably said growing up. You ain't got anything good to say. Don't say it. Yep. Um, and it's really interesting. And there's so much science and data behind, you know, how how by helping other people, how it helps you yeah, overcome things. Right. Yeah. So you, you took a part where you're like, this sucks. I got to get through this, but you know what? I'm going to go in there and help everybody else get through it together. So it's almost like you're working together as a team. So it's really cool. You know, you, you know, Scott, not to, not to kind of dump on, on, on what you just said there. Uh, but the, the, the thing we all heard growing up, if you ain't got nothing good to say, then don't say it. I challenge people out there. If you don't have anything good to say, find something good to say and say, yeah. 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 Cause, cause you want to talk about making a positive impact on this world. What, what do you laid out the scenario of, you know, you're in the grocery store and you walk by somebody, you connect eyes, you say, Hey, how are you? Yeah. A lot of people do not do that. Right. They, they go through life believing, not actually believing, but you kind of fall into this mode that that this world was created for you because that's your that's your perspective it's it's your life you're living so mm-hmm. everybody else is just kind of pieces playing out in your movie and i know that isn't real people don't actually believe that but sometimes it can get like that so if you just find a way to acknowledge somebody else just say hey or hold a door for somebody or or you're driving down the road and you give somebody a wave. They ain't going to wave back. They're going to go, what the hell? I don't, I don't know them. But just a small little gesture like that can 
can mean something big for somebody that you have no idea what, what you just did for them in that day. Right. And there's a positive impact on the world. There you go. Yeah. Like Danny said, people just want to be seen and heard and I see you and that's as easy as a wave. I see you. Yeah. 